what's going down everybody welcome back to the station welcome back to the channel y'all know who it is it's your boy ray g you can find me down below on twitter at ray gq and this is the dynasty trade show episode 39 brought to you by ftn fantasy and in the lab make sure you subscribe to the in the lab podcast the ftn fantasy podcast network and when you go to ftnfantasy.com use the promo code all gas to save you a little something something on the checkout but as we wind down the fantasy football season Trade deadlines have stopped for majority of people who play fantasy football, but those of us degenerates in dynasty fantasy football, the trade business is still alive and well in the patrons, patreon.com forward slash prospect talk. They are still making trades. So as long as trades are happening inside the discord, then we will continue to have this show. We've got a couple of trades to look at today. Some wild banana land type stuff going on in the dynasty fantasy football world. We're going to roll it right after the intro, baby. So let's get into it. And the first one is Banana Land. It is wild. Javonta Williams. Let's talk about him. Let's see what's going down. Let's slide over and take a look at this deal. So we got a big trade. We got a big trade. And right now, right off the bat, when I use the words, when I say the name Nick Vanette, Scotty Miller, Cam Sims, this is the classic GQ, a bunch of junk to try to get what you want. This is already starting off real junky. Real trashy. So we got Nick Vanette, Cam Sims, Scotty Miller, A.J. Dillon, DeAndre Swift, and a 2023 second-round pick being traded for Cordero Patterson, James Conner, Melvin Gordon, Hunter Renfro, and Javonta Williams. Uh, Folks, I love me uh, DeAndre Swift as much as the next person, but uh, in no world... In no world. Let, let's just let's break this down real quick. What is junk? Trash. Nick Vanette, junk. Cam Sims, junk. Scotty Miller, junk. AJ Dillon, fine. DeAndre Swift, stud. 22, 2023 second, nice value. But three of the six assets in this deal are absolute garbage. Worthless. Uh, I wouldn't even call them depreciating assets. They have no value whatsoever. For James Conner, who's having an incredible season. Uh, revitalize his career, maybe the guy next year. We'll, we'll see how that plays out, but he's played very well in Arizona. Cordero Patterson, again, older. When you're talking about a dynasty asset, uh, Cordero Patterson isn't somebody that you're going to build your team around. But if Atlanta decides to rock with him for another season, uh, he's going to provide value, right? He's been outstanding this season. Again, not a long-term foundational asset, solid player to get you through the playoff push. Maybe have you some value in 2022. Uh, Melvin Gordon in a timeshare. But here's the beauty of this. Not only did Raptor 1523 get Melvin Gordon, he got Melvin Gordon's counterpart in Javonta Williams along with stud wide receiver Hunter Renfro. And I know Hunter Renfro didn't have a great game versus Cleveland, but I still want him. He is a PPR monster. I want Hunter Renfro. So you're telling me all I had to do was give up DeAndre Swift and I get Javonta Williams who... Uh, I mean, most people have those two back-to-back in their dynasty rankings, at least, at at worst, their top 10 dynasty running backs. So you trade one top 10 dynasty running back, you get one that's a little bit younger, seems to be able to handle the abuse a little bit more. We'll see how that works out, catches the ball the same way Swift does. Uh, You get James Conner, you get Cordero Patterson, you get Melvin Gordon. Those are pieces that a contending team in 2022 would like to have on their roster because they probably will help. Again, not cornerstone foundational players, but assets that will 100% be able to be packaged up and traded in the future. You will not be able to package up Nick Vanette, Scotty Miller, and Cam- whoever JCAP86 is, send them the link. Let, let's get them some help. Call 911. This was terrible. This was highway, grand theft, uh, point blank gun. Like, this is robbery to, to the highest degree. Terrible deal for JCAP86. Fantastic work by Raptor1523 getting Javonta Williams and company. Great trade for you, sir. You're dynastying the right way. All right, another deal. This is this is simple, but it's called getting off of depreciating assets and, and getting top value for them. Rob Gronkowski for a 2022 second. I, listen, if you were making a playoff push, yes, you go get Rob Gronkowski. If you're not, you accept a second. It's as simple as that. This is a good, 
clean deal for both parties, right? I am going to assume that Rick Reese 32 is a playoff contending playoff team, uh, you know, and right now it's looking beautiful because the Buccaneers are decimated at wide receiver. Gronk still led the team in targets. He's going to be a big part of that offense the last couple of weeks of our fantasy playoffs. This was a good deal for both teams. You only had to pay a 2022 second. You get Rob Gronkowski. You get off of Rob Gronkowski. You get a second round pick in 2022. Beautiful deal. Both sides. Uh, this was this was fine. Good business. This is how you dynasty. You make a push. You get one of these older assets who can produce for you, help you win down the stretch. And if you're not in contention, you get off of that. You just, you don't, in my opinion, I don't know if you want to be caught holding the Rob Gronkowski bag in 2022. If he comes back with Tom Brady, he should still be very good. But I, I'd rather have the 2022 second draft my young player, get me a Wandell Robinson, a Zach Charbonnet, maybe a Chris Olave, George Pickens in the second, opposed to rolling with Rob Gronkowski in 2022. Good work. Like that deal. All right. Banana land trade. Here we go. Just we need a crazy sounder because this is insane. And I love Justin Jefferson. I love Jets. He's wide receiver one in Dynasty for me. Fantastic player. Uh, just incredible. No regression whatsoever. S breaks the rookie receiving record last year and is just going to go bizarre, berserk the last couple of weeks here and top that. So Jefferson is a beast. But this trade, you get Justin Jefferson. And here's what you gave up. For those of y'all who don't see it, this is what this individual gave up in order to acquire Justin Jefferson. Not one, not two, but three first-round picks in 2022, a second-round pick in 2022, Jacoby Myers and Kadarius Toney. So they gave, I mean, and even if, let's go worst-case scenario, this is 112, 111, 110. I still am going to take my chances with those three darts, Kadarius Toney, Jacoby Myers, and whoever you get in the second round opposed to Justin Jefferson. And I love, I am all about getting talented players, proven players, but giving up six assets that could be usable. Like Kadarius Toney's still young. His season did not play out the way that we thought it would after we saw him go nuts a couple of games this year. Uh, the Giants are a mess. They're probably going to upgrade their quarterback situation, uh, potentially their GM. I'm not the biggest Jacoby Myers fan, but as long as he's catching receptions, he's got some value in, in New England, right? Whether that's in a package deal, maybe standalone, depending on what they do this offseason. I, I just want the, I want the package. I want the three first rounders. That's gold. That's liquid gold in 2022. Um, and, and, and they're just shots. Like, are those, are those picks... Can Jamison Williams or Drake London, uh, Jahan Dotson, Kyron Williams, I'm thinking back half first round guys according to our, our ADP and our mock drafts, are they going to be able to produce to the level that Justin Jefferson can single-handedly? Probably not. But you, you hit on a player that people love, right? You get you a Malik Willis at 110. You might be able to flip Willis for two or three first round picks. Like these are assets that will help you in Dynasty Fantasy Football. And as much as I love Justin Jefferson, there's no way I'm giving up three first-round picks, a second Tony and Myers for Justin Jefferson. That is banana land. Banana land trade right there. Can't do it. Uh, love Jets, but I, I want the six assets. Another deal involving wide receivers and a running back. Stud, young wide receivers. We've got Terry McLaurin and Cam Akers being acquired for CeeDee Lamb. I jinxed Terry McLaurin ever since I proclaimed him to be a top five wide receiver in the NFL. He shit the bed week after week. I can't do it. Cannot do it. Give me C.D. Lamb over Terry McLaurin and Cam Akers. Still believe in the talent that Cam Akers could, could you know, realize if he comes back from that Achilles tear. I think he's going to be better two years from now than he is going to be next season. So I'm still in on Cam Akers. Still a very young player. Terry McLaurin poised to go over 1,000 yards again this year. He's like at 859, got two games left. Uh, but CeeDee Lamb is the asset that I want. If I could pick CeeDee Lamb versus those two players, give me the elite high-end wide receiver talent over Terry McLaurin and Cam Akers. I don't think this was a bad deal. I, I know I see some, some of the emojis in here, the oh my God. I don't think this is a bad, horrible deal at all. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But for me, I would prefer CeeDee Lamb on this side of the deal. If we knew definitively that Akers was back, he's on track to be ready for week one, 
it may make it a little more intriguing for me. But I don't think this was a bad deal. I would prefer CeeDee Lamb over Cam Akers and Terry McLaurin. All right, let's see. What do we have here? We've got a uh, Rondell Moore. We've got a Rondell Moore deal. So we've got an individual receiving, and I know this because I read it, the 102. So this 2022 first-round pick is the 102. This individual also holds the 101 in this same draft. So they locked up 101, 102. Whether they want to go Walker Hall, Spiller Hall, Corral Hall, Corral Spiller, they get two of the top picks, Traylon Burks, solidified in the in the 2022 class. So the 102 for Rondell Moore, a 2022 second, and the and I know this 2022 first right here is like the 111, 112. So a back end first, uh, a high second in Rondell Moore for the 102 in the 2022 class. I want the 102. I want the 102. I think as much as I love Rondell Moore, if he's going to be continued, is it, if he's going to be used as a throw the ball to him behind the line of scrimmage and then you figure it out on your own after that Rondell Moore, if that's his role, then that's that's a tough sell in fantasy football. I really thought he'd be utilized a la Jalen Waddell in Miami. And all they do is throw him smoke screens, bubble screens, and passes behind the line of scrimmage and say, all right, Rondell Moore, we got you the ball. Use your yak ability to make seven guys miss. And that's that's not going to work. So if I can lock up that 102 spot, which would easily command multiple firsts to move up to in the 2022 class, uh, if you take a quarterback, that values two first-round picks minimum. I'm going to take, I'm going to take that high-end 102 uh, combined with having the 101 opposed to the back end first, the second, and Rondell Moore. And I know in the previous trade, we talked about a bunch of assets for one player. Same principle here, but the difference is that 102 has some sort of tangible value today because you are guaranteed either the quarterback one, if it's a super flex league, or skill position player one. You are guaranteed Burks, Spiller, Hall, Corral, Willis, Pickett, however you have the quarterbacks ranked, and there is there is some significant advantage to having your pick of the litter, especially where you'll have league mates who are in love with one prospect or another. Uh, you kind of control the narrative there. Uh, so give me the 102 opposed to the late first, Rondell Moore, and a second round pick. And the final trade we're going to look at, uh, the dumpster fire Jacksonville Jaguars have people panicked doing dumb, idiotic things like this one right here. And this is probably one of the stone worst deals I've seen. And it's super flex. So let's get that out of the way. It ain't single quarterback. This is super flex. We have Tampa Bay Buccaneers backup quarterback, maybe the third string quarterback, Kyle Trask, plus a late 2022 first round pick being traded or acquired. Now, I'm going to assume this. In, yeah, the person who posted this did not black out their name. They wanted us to know at Daniel Jones just committed robbery. Kyle Trask and a late first rounder in 2022 for Trevor Lawrence. I get it. T-Law has not played well this year. Jacksonville is a dumpster fire. Nobody, no self-respecting dynasty gamer would make as egregious of a trade as what I'm looking at right here. Kyle Trask, and according to our mock draft ADP, Kyle Trask, and who's 111? I'm trying to think. I just posted the damn video. 111, I think Willis was 109, David Bell 110. Uh, You're talking about David Bell for Trevor Lawrence. Are you kidding me? This is, of all the trades that we feature, there have been some bad ones. You know, maybe somebody got, got gypped on some value. This is super flex. And if you're that panicked, over the situation in Jacksonville, you don't deserve Trevor Lawrence. If this is what it takes to acquire Trevor Lawrence in Dynasty, I urge you all to send offers out right now for Jacksonville Jaguars players, and in particular, the quarterback Trevor Lawrence. This right here qualifies as his classic cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, banana land type trade. What a failure. And you shouldn't have blacked out this individual's name. We should all be able to publicly laugh Point and shame that individual for making this trade. In no world does this make sense. None. No universe, the multiverse, uh, it doesn't matter. AT&T U-verse, 
This trade makes absolute no sense. Great job getting Trevor Lawrence and capitalizing on the fear and panic of dynasty gamers who don't deserve any goodwill that comes their way. And my advice to you, if you're playing in dynasty leagues and the trade deadline is implemented, once the playoffs are over, it should open immediately back up. Immediately. In leagues that I'm running, once you're eliminated from playoffs, feel free. I, and I shouldn't even have a trade deadline, period. But we just want to stop some of the foolishness with teams making last-second ditch effort trades to try to win the chip. But as soon as you're eliminated from playoff contention, the trade trade floodgates are wide open. So if your commissioner is telling you you can't trade until the end of the Super Bowl or to the cut kind of dead all of that, take a vote. You should be able to trade. Let's get it popping. We want more trades in the channel. I want to see what y'all are doing in the offseason. And I'll have a video coming out real soon about players who underperformed in 2021 that you should be trying to acquire and players who may have overperformed and you need to be moving off of your dynasty rosters as we approach draft season for the 2022 NFL draft class. I appreciate you. Lend me a couple of minutes of your time. If you enjoy the content, hit the thumbs up button, like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, make sure you are following FTN Fantasy's uh, uh, podcast network, FTN Network. Check out all the dope shows on that lineup. And if you go to FTNFantasy.com and you want to sign up, use the promo code all gas. I appreciate y'all. Engage with the good people below. Happy holidays. And we'll be back with more shows on the channel later this week. I'm out. Peace.